Hello everyone, I'm Nico. And I'm Jack. And welcome to another podcast. We have come back to our little favourite place in Beijing, I guess you'd say. Yeah, like our little secret canal near little to where canal. we live. I don't think many people know about this place really. No, it's like a little quiet piece of heaven in basically centre of Beijing. This time we are not getting bit by mosquitoes, but we are a little bit cold. So we have a little coffee to warm us up. A little 7-Eleven special. 7-Eleven special. This podcast is not sponsored by 7-Eleven, but we are partial to their coffees. Yep, we are open to commercial <laughs> opportunities though. Yep. Get it, grab a coffee, it's pretty cheap. Um, also, just a little word of warning, um, this area, which we do dearly love so much, is one reason is because... There are so many cute dogs here. There are so here, many cute dogs, so, so I apologise in advance for if I get a little bit distracted by a really adorable dog walking past because you know how I am with dogs. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. No, we're not. What are we talking about, Jack? Enough waffling. We are talking about... The public transport in China. Yeah, we're going to talk about public transport today because somebody messaged on one of my videos, I can't remember which one now, um, and asked us to do a podcast about public transport here. Yep. Also on that note, if you want us to talk about a topic in particular, then, you know, leave a comment. Yeah, leave Tell a comment Tell us what you want below. us to chat we'll about. get on it. Um, so we thought we'd talk about public transport today, and you know that we like this topic quite a lot. Yeah, we do. We do, because we have a few infrastructure videos about infrastructure in China because we're pretty impressed by it, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, and obviously one of the key kind of factors of the infrastructure and I think the things that most uh, amazed us was the public transport, which is something we yeah. use pretty much every day, right? Well, some of us do. How do you get to work, Jack? So I actually take the metro every single day and, you know, the novelty has not worn off for me. Yeah. That, I can say that for sure. I mean, every time I look at the map, there seems to be a new line popping up, a new station. And yeah. it's amazing how far out of the city you can drive. It's some kind of real, quite like very sort of suburban, new buildy bits. And there'll just be a metro stop there that would link you with the downtown. It's pretty impressive, really. I really like um, the way it looks as well. Like, it gives me all the feels. Like, you when you look at the map. All of the it. map, yeah. Because it's, it's basically... It's really satisfying. Yeah, like, it's basically Love a it. bunch of rings and then, like, archeries that come in and out, which basically mean, I think, that you only ever really have to make a couple of changes no matter how far you're going. Yeah. And for a lot of, lot of places, you only ever really have to make one change. So pretty yeah, impressive. Yeah, I and mean, we live pretty central, so like it's quite good for us. We can, you know, we don't really. Well, actually, we live by three metro stops, three different yeah. lines. It's really handy. Super convenient. Um, but yeah, I really like the look of it. It's very, very interesting. What do you think about it when you ride it? So you get it every morning. Like, what's is it? Is it very busy when you get it in the morning? Yeah, that is the biggest downside. Is how busy it is. It does get um, during rush hour, like any metro around the world. It does get absolutely mm -hmm. ramo. But what I would say is it doesn't feel nearly as busy as the metro does, well, what we would call the tube in London, which I think obviously was is much older, was built, um, you know, some God, parts yeah. like, very, like, very old. like a century ago, you know. So London has grown a lot, but the metro physically there, the tube, can't tube. grow anymore. Um, no. You know, so the stations are very tight. It's very cramped. There's no air conditioning in summer. Yeah, it's, and it's really expensive, it's actually, the so tube. It's so expensive. Really whereas, expensive. Whereas the metro here is, I think, what's the maximum fare? About eight, eight, eight yuan? I think about ten, ten if yuan. you go really far out. And that could be literally a three-hour ride if you went from the northeast right. to the southwest or vice versa. Because so. I remember, well, the last time we was in London, obviously, if you've got an Oyster card, it's a little bit cheaper which is like a, mm -hmm. a card that you get but if you've got a day pass it's like nine pound yeah imagine that's doing that expensive. every day like that's I a mean, big that's a chunk of your money. wage packet going on going on the metro whereas i think my journey to work is about four rmb so i what, spend around back yeah yeah so i spend that's i spend ridiculous. eight rmb a day you know that's that pretty is decent so isn't it i don't get the subway as often i'm not gonna lie um but <laughs> But when I do, and I have got it late at night on my own before as well, I feel really safe here. Like they're quite new and modern. I never very clean as well. Yeah, very clean, and I do feel like quite quite safe about getting them here. Um, I haven't got the the tube late at night, so I can't compare it to London. Um, but I do like I do like in London how they uh, write the little notes. Have you seen the like tube? Then they write the ni nice like positive notes. Those yeah, they're nice. cute, aren't they? And also like it is old, but I kind of like the retro feel and like the tube. It like, does have it's nice a, it's vibes, a good right? Like it's it has like, good vibes. It's got a nice vibe. Um, yeah. How do you get to work then? Um, I, I, I have an an e bike, so I take a scooter Ooh. because <laughs> because it is really convenient where we live. Like we said, we live in between three different. Yep. Um, 
metro stops. But for me to get to work, I have to like walk to metro station, then I have to go one stop, then I have to change, and then I have to go two stops. And it's just, it would actually take me way longer. So I have an e-bike, which isn't exactly public transport, but they are very, very, like you you see them everywhere here. Like yep, loads of people have the e-bike. Because Beijing's really flat, so and the bike lanes are really wide. So it's a really good way for me to get to work. I will say, however, sometimes the roads are a little bit bumpy and there's quite a lot of potholes, but isn't that the same everywhere? I mean, like there's a lot of people using it. So that's very true. What can you say? Um, so I really, I really like getting my e-bike. I only get the subway on weekends. Yeah. Um, but speaking of bikes, we are partial to a bit of share bikes. And actually, as I'm saying share bikes, there are like four share bikes going past us. Right yeah, now. you can probably hear them squeaking <laughs> a little bit. Um, I think they need Which a bit hilarious. of an oil. Yeah, so there's loads of share bikes in Beijing. Yep. And um, if you're not familiar with this concept, I'm sure you are. But if you're not familiar with the concept, you have an app and you you scan a code, you get a bike, you ride it for however long you want and you leave it somewhere. And it's just, I just feel like it's just such amazing thing. Well, it's something that exploded obviously in China first with like Mobike and Ofo and, and these companies. And now actually um, a lot of those companies have expanded overseas. And so it's now kind of, you see them in London and places like that. Well, again, it's not necessarily public transport, but uh, you know, everybody uses them public. But it's definitely part of the kind of the infrastructure and the network. Um, there's no way that, that they could, I think, without no. kind of government approval, be part of the city planning. And I think what you're noticing now and what I've been noticing is they are getting a little bit more controlled, a little bit more regulated in terms of where you can park them. Yeah, and definitely. it is because it is very much like a part of the way that the city gets around. Yeah. You know, loads of people cycle to work. Yeah. Especially here. Or at least even from the metro to the metro and back, you know, from their, their nearest stop. Yeah, stops, definitely. So. Especially here in Beijing. Uh, <laughs> as we recently noticed as when we went to uh, Chongqing that there were not very many bikes because it is such a mountainous city yeah, that it would just be impossible sure. to have bikes there which is totally fair so instead they've thought of some other ingenious ways to get around the city like a monorail a mono well yeah a monorail a ferry a ferry <laughs> uh, a cable car elevators Elev yeah a we made a whole film about this and i'm yeah. sure you've probably already seen it because i think not, that's what yeah if go. not hit that link but it is really cool i do f i do quite like like a quirky bit of public transport um that like I think that's why I found Chongqing so interesting. I quite like in my home city, yep. there is a metro, which isn't quite like the tube. It almost feels a bit of novelty when, uh, for me anyway, <laughs> like going on it because you're like, oh, we'll get the metro. That's what I call it. And like in Nottingham, where we used to live, they had the trams. Yeah, they have a tram in Hong Kong, though. We've not been there Did yet. They? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one thing that hasn't impressed me, bringing it back to Beijing, where we live. Oh, yeah. The buses. We've never taken no, a bus in Beijing. We, we took a bus in Nanjing. Yeah, we've never taken a bus in Beijing. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. They go all over the city. They're yeah. amazing. But the problem is, um, none of the, the stations are actually <laughs> they they don't have pinion names. Yeah, and it's really all of the all the signs are only like exclusively written in, in Chinese. So it's really hard to kind of navigate, whereas the metro is super easy for a foreigner to navigate. Yeah. I find the buses English. are a little hard. Apparently if you have Apple Maps you can yeah, you somebody can use told them. me that, but we don't have Apple phones. So, um, like, that's not ideal. Um, you could use a Chinese app, but again, you'd have to read Chinese. And yeah. at the minute, we're not fluent. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a little bit more difficult. Yep. So we've just kind of avoided it. But as I mentioned earlier, we do live in central Beijing. So it is easy. And instead of getting buses, if, if it's late and we do need to get somewhere, we usually just order a DD. Oh, yeah. Which is the like same as the Uber. Uber. And... Because we don't really need to go that far. I mean, our longest DD ride is probably like 20 minutes or something. And it doesn't really cost that much. It's incredibly cheap. Yeah, it's much uh, it's much more reasonably priced than Uber. And even when they have kind of surge prices, it's not like the... If you get in like a Saturday night in, in a town centre in the UK or, or the US, you get oh like the eight God. times surge or whatever, and however yeah. ridiculous it gets. But obviously Uber tried to, um, tried to make it big in China. Um, and there was kind of... Uh, when we first arrived, they were kind of competing services um, between Didi and Uber. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, know Yeah, and they both, like, Uber spent so much money trying to basically crack the Chinese market. Interesting. And Didi spent a lot of money trying to fight them off. And actually, when we first used to take Didi's, we'd often get free rides. And, oh, and yeah, we did. 
And the reason was is because they were trying to basically get customer <laughs> loyalty. Um, and it worked. DD did, prevailed. Yeah. I, yeah, it did, it did. I remember yeah. that. That was pretty cool because it had just started. Generally, the prices for public transport in China yeah. is a lot lower than a lot of other countries around the world because there are so many more people in the cities. So what that means is it's a lot more economical for the government to run the services. It just makes a lot more financial sense. So we've spoken about quite a few things that we like about public transport here. So what do you hate about public transport here? Um, I would say probably when it gets busy. Um, oh, God. I think people pushing to get on the metro before yeah. you get off. That's like something that really irritates me, like oh, is that. when people try to push in the doors before you've even had a chance to get off. And I think that's just kind that of common grinds courtesy. my gears. It's like, so annoying. Let me off, you know? then there'll be space. It's so annoying. That is really irritating. Um, I remember this one yeah. time when I was meeting you at the train station. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, I don't often get the subway. So, oh, hiya. Hello, doggo. Hiya. Hello. Hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Hello, mate. Oh. Hello. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> I'm ready. Jesus. <laughs> So, I remember this one time, I was being, oh, that's so cute. Right, I so remember this one time, I, I, I took the public transport. <laughs> no, so I remember this one time, I was meeting you at the train station, and I had a bag, because we were going away for the weekend, and I had to get line, oh, one of the lines that goes across the bottom, oh my god, I've never seen it so busy, and people, like, it was, you just couldn't get on, and then people were just, like, pushing to get on, and I had to let like three trains go by and I thought, oh my God, I'm going to miss, I'm actually going to miss my train. And I got to the point and I was like literally holding my bag like this and I've never been so cramped in my entire life. And I was just like, this is exactly why I don't take the subway. <laughs> um, I luckily made the train, but yeah, I think maybe that scarred me for life a little bit. So I, I just don't like that much personal space invading, to be honest. No, it's very invasive, the space stuff, isn't it? Oh, I'm still looking at the dog. Sorry. <laughs> it's so cute. We said, right, we're going to wrap this up in a second. So one of the things that y you mentioned to me yep. is um, headphones. Headphones, yeah, yeah, yeah. Headphones. I mean, this is, I think, I've kind seen, of I've seen some um, posters about that now. Yeah, though. so they've started to, it's like something that's going on all over China is basically uh, the government's trying to encourage people to uh, wear headphones on public transport and wear just headphones. in public spaces, I think, because it's <sighs> something which is so irritating when it's you're on so public annoying. transport and someone's just playing like Douyin super loud. You know, really, swiping really, up. Really annoying. Like, I can totally understand it if you've got a child and they're watching the iPad and they're paying cartoons. Like, yeah. that is fine. But if you're just like watching something and it's like incredibly loud. It's normally all men, I would and it's say. Like, so so they've got it on really loudly because their hearing isn't great. But I, I, I think that's I, changing. I've, I've scolded at people before for not wearing headphones beside me. I'm just like, I need to learn how to say that in Chinese, actually. Because, yeah, that really that annoys me too. But, you know. Little prices to pay. There's a lot of people here. We live in Beijing, you know, it's a noisy city. So, speaking of noise. Anyway, um, I think on that note, we should wrap it up because my hands are freezing. My hands are yeah, so my hands are cold, really cold right now. now. So, I think we've been chatting along. So, yeah, let us know what you think about public transport here or wherever you are. And, like, if you can compare it, like, tell us some of the best things that you like about your public transport, some of the worst. Compare it. If you've been to China before, like, what do you think? Yeah, which city as well? Is it, like, Ooh, which awesome? city has the best public transport that you've ever been to? So yeah. far, I would say mine is Chongqing, but maybe tell us and we can eventually visit there. Yeah, make a video. All so, right, guys. See you later, guys. See you in a bit. Bye. Bye.